Awesome. So we do see now Revnat coming up with the classic Revnat composition, timing his Vet Musk upgrade with the longbows. Got to try and dance around this gold mine, which is going to be really tricky. Fouts is just going to go straight in here. Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with some more Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition and I have a juicy British mirror for you between Revnak and Minimult. Top 10 players here so I'm sure you guys can learn a lot from them. They're going to be using one of the brand new cards that's recently been released which is the Greenwich Time and that really does sort of change the way that the Brits open up and you're going to be seeing that in this game. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. If you do, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below and if you find this useful, entertaining, all that good stuff, please feel free to drop a like. All right, let's get into it. Right, guys, welcome to another casted game. We have Jenny Parsnips um, playing at the top right part of the map here in the sign as the Brits. And of course, we have my good friend Revnak at the bottom left part of the map in the pink playing as the Brits as well. And I've got to say, guys, this is a Brit mirror. So there's, you're probably going to see in chat, or you, you can already see from my good friend Harrison, that people moan a lot about the Brit Mirror. I moan a lot about the Brit Mirror. It's very, very boring, basic. It's just normally the same composition against the same composition. It's the same thing. Uh, we're going to see how this plays out because Brits have changed. There's been an update. There's new cards. There's a new type of opening. And we're definitely going to be seeing that in this game. So we're going to be seeing that good old Greenwich time card that provides you with a, with a trade post wagon. And we're going to be seeing that in action. And you can see here that both players have already gone for a TP opening. So they've both gone for the exact same thing. And it looks like this is... I'm hoping this is going to be a big fight of the TP line. I'm hoping there's going to be some good H2 action here. Fighting over the TP line. I can't say for sure. I don't exactly know what's going to happen here. But let, let's see what happens. So Jenny Parsnips here going straight in for the Greenwich time, of course. And we do see that now from Revnak is most likely going to be selecting that as well. But Jenny Parsnips already already ahead. Who is Jenny Parsnips? Do we know? I keep having small lags. Okay. Uh, I don't see any frame drops on my side. So I don't know. It might be a self-scorpion. I'm not too sure. I don't see any issues on my side. Let's stop advocating broken sieves. Yeah, I thought it was... Is it Minimalt? I think it is Minimalt, isn't it? I was thinking, is it Minimalt? My, my good friend Minimalt. But I do I, I do really love his China play. His H2 China play. I do that quite quite um, quite um a lot on the ladder. The 12, 1300 ELO, the Brits are easy targets. Hi. So here we go. So we do see the trading, trading post wagon coming out now. And um, I imagine it's exactly the same for... No, Revnak's actually gone for the three settler card first. Interesting. So it isn't going for that immediate TP. However, good old... I believe this is Mini Malt, Jenny Parsnips. What time is it? Absolutely fantastic. What a card. What a deck name. We are going to call Jenny Parsnips Jenny Parsnips, though. Even though we do think it is most likely Mini Malt, we will call Jenny Parsnips Jenny Parsnips. That's uh, Jenny Parsnips is Jenny Parsnips. There we go. So we've got a different different kind of order here with the with the home cities. We had the Greenwich time and the Threeville from Jenny over here. And Revnat going for the Threeville first and then the Greenwich time. So slightly different. Most likely, I imagine he is going to be going for the Greenwich time card. Um, and it looks like he is going to be grabbing the 40 coin card here. And a transition over to Wood in the age up. The Governor. And there it is. And it looks like Jenny is going to be aging up just about now. So a little bit behind and going for the governor as well. So once again, very mirror throughout. But I'm really interested to see how this is going to play out with the whole Greenwich time and, and, and what we're going to be seeing here. Don't be sad, Scorpion. Don't be sad. So we see actually pretty much all veals on wood for uh, Jenny, but Revnak only um, a handful, 12 majority on it. And we do see now, now the Greenwich time is coming out for Revnak. So that's going to kind of slow down that XP a little bit for him. He's going to have more of a long-term eco benefit with the three veals, but he's going to have a little bit of delay in his cards now because he, um, he got the Greenwich time a little bit later. He got it as the second card choice, whereas Jenny went for the first card choice. And you can see they're pretty much bang on. Revnak's a little bit ahead on age up. 
You can see how fast that age up is now as well. Because of the TPs and what the Greenwich card does. And honestly, I think what would have been better, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it would have been better to go for the Greenwich time first because you would have secured the two TPs before you started aging up. So you would have been able to age up a lot quicker unless I'm, unless I'm missing the point here. But we do see here Jenny opening up with a good four base racks and the outpost, which is something that we do see quite often when we're playing against Brits or when you're playing as Brits. You know, it's a good age two style using the governor to get that outpost, put the barracks down. That 200 coin will also allow you to get your market upgrades. It will allow you to start getting troops in queue. And we do see now 700 wood on the way. Market upgrades coming in for Jenny and exactly the same for Revnak. We see the 700 wood coming in and we've got a defensive barracks now for Revnak. And you can see if we look at Revnak's view here, he doesn't have any idea that Jenny has gone for a forward base, but Probably Revnak, knowing how Jenny plays, probably already anticipates that. So is going to play defensive and go ahead and get that barracks down. We do see, still see majority of Vils on wood here just to continue with the house booming. Because even though they haven't gone VC, it's always good to continue that house building throughout. And now I believe he, he has got sight of the forward base. And now what is Jenny up to? Does have a card available. Three musks only got out, and we do see now the 600 wood. So good old 700, 600, and away we go. I'm going to have to leave. I can't watch because of my lag. Have a very nice stream for you all, Scorpion. I am so sorry that you cannot watch it, but please feel free to watch the past broadcast in your spare time. You'll be able to watch it, then you shouldn't have any issues. So now we do see a longbow answer here from Revnak. Going to be going out here, and getting the 600 wood exactly like Jenny. So they're pretty much got exactly the same cards, slightly different order at the start. But we do see Jenny going for a forward base, more aggressive, and Revnak going for a defensive, opening up with the longbows to try and get that extra range in. And we do see the new models of the longbowmen with their with their sort of head scarfs on. And I think their quivers are slightly larger. There you go. Look at them. Beautiful. Absolutely delightful. And we do see just more house building here from Revnat. We have a total of nine houses. And uh, Jenny over here, total of nine houses as well. And a further barracks, a slightly defensive one further back for Jenny. Now, that's probably just in case we do uh, get a, a frontal assault and potentially lose that barracks. So it's good to have another one slightly further back. And he is going to, unfortunately, that's really unfortunate, missing that pop there of the Musketeers. Only getting one out, which is actually quite quite critical. And Revnak here getting some more market upgrades and starting with the Longbowman now. Starting to go for the 700 coin. And we do see five Vils coming in now. So Jenny decided to go more of a, a longer term economic route by going for the five Settlers rather than the 700 coin. Ready. And we only got seven Musketeers here. Don't know whether we're seeing a potential delay for an age up here. I don't think we are. No, continued musk production. And I think, I don't know whether we're going to be seeing it from Revnak, whether he's looking to age up here. 700 coin is coming in. That's usually a sign that he's preparing to get into age three. There doesn't seem to be any military units in queue. And he seems to be, yep, it looks like he's, he's just aligning his macro accordingly so that he can get into age three. Scores, look at that. Can you get any... Look at that. Do you get any closer? Very, very similar here from both players. But just a slightly different composition, slightly different play. And uh, Jenny definitely staying in the game here, not going for the 700 gold and going for the Musketeer damage upgrade. And I think the minute Jenny finds out that there is going to be an H3 coming from Revnak, he is going to be pushing very, very hard. But hang on a minute. We do see the switch. The Musketeer being removed and a 700 coin coming in. So looks like Jenny is thinking about aging up now as well, actually. But Revnak way out in front now, starting to get in. So once Jenny realizes that Revnak's actually aged up, we're probably going to see some sort of push here, most likely. So going up with the Adventurer. Oh my, that's going to leave a Ooh. nasty little mark. Ezad. Hey, Crab Court, how you doing, man? Ezad with the absolute humongous raid. That's one of the largest raids I've had. 70. 
70 participants into my stream. 70 viewers, 70 strong. Thank you very much, Ezad. I appreciate it, dude. Welcome, everyone. We are watching a replay submission here from Revnak. Playing against good old Jenny here, which we believe is Minimal. And it is a, it is a Brit Mirror, so I know most people are going to say it's boring, it's a Brit Mirror. But of course, we've got the new Brit, we've got the new Greenwich time opening, and we do see um, two TPs from both sides. Revnak coming in with the age up a little bit in front of uh, Jenny here. And Jenny now aging up with the Bishop. Thanks for the content, E-God. Ah, oh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Crab Got. Thank you, man. Thank you for you for, for, for organizing amazing tournaments. And of course, there is the next, guys. There is the next um, FPL or UEC, I guess you could call it now, isn't it? The United Empires um, tournament is going to be coming up, the spring one of 2022. So make sure you guys stick around for that. That is going to be coming very shortly. And there's lots of participants and it's going to be uh, it's going to be really awesome. So we do see now Revnat coming up with the classic Revnat composition, timing his Vet Musk upgrade with the longbows. And he is going to go straight to the forward base of Jenny here and pushing the Mask Musk. The Mass Musk. Or the Musk Mass, sorry. And he ne probably needs to back off here because he doesn't want to be trading with um, his Age 2 Musks here. He wants to wait until he gets into Age 3. He probably wants to wait for his upgrade before he does anything else. He does have a card available. And it looks like the two Falks, of course, have been shipped for Revnak. And this is the classic Brit timing now, guys, which is the sort of Musk Longbow two Falk timing that you see with the Greenwich time. You know, using this card, it enables you to get a, a semi-FF style opening and you can really, really do a great push with it. And we do see now Jenny is also getting the two Falks. So very, very similar play, of course, which you most of the time, which you see in a Brit mirror, of course. Hey, Emco, I'm here just to say H3 is better than H4. And good evening, of course. Good evening to you. Let's not bring H4 into the chat. I don't mind bringing H4 into the chat. But, um, you know, H4 isn't doing... Well, it's just doing all right, isn't it? I don't think it's doing a, a, as good as people thought it would be doing. But... I'm not going to get hung up over Age 4. It's a fun game to play. I played Age 4 with like team games. I enjoy team games on Age 4 more than 1v1s for some reason. And I'm just not a huge fan of the kind of meta of Age 4, to be honest, and how it's sort of turned out. I don't know whether that's going to change in the future, but that's just my opinion. And I just still prefer Age 3. You know, I enjoy it. So uh, both of them now having two Falks. And it looks like Revnak, yep, is going for an artillery... Found, oh, sorry, no. Um, Jenny is going for an artillery foundry, producing further Falks. And Revnak actually going up for the Musketeer combat upgrade. So he's going for the 15% HP and damage. And I think I've got the annoying sound bug because this game is really buggy after the, after the update. Ooh, very good shot there from Revnak. Deleting two Falks. He's not going to be able to get that. Um... Looks like there was a pause. And a TC going down now. For Revnak. He actually did ship the thousand wood there. To get that T to get that TC up, sorry. Jenny just uh continuing to produce mass musk, it seems. And unfortunately losing two two Falconets there. Revnak does lose one. Or does lose both actually. Looks like he'd actually lost both there. Yeah, he is now producing further Falks. Uh, serious amount of veals on gold here. It looks like he really wants to get these Falks in because I, I believe Falks are... They are they are not cheap. They're, they're 400 gold a piece, I think. They're 100 wood and 400 gold, right? Yeah, they are a lot. They're a lot of gold. So he's definitely mining and, and so is uh, Jenny as well. We do see a church going up. I like the new British Rangers. Yeah, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them in action. I hope, I hope that we do manage to see that in action in this... In this playthrough here, probably not because really you see them in action in age four. So I don't, I don't know if we are going to see it here, but we, you know, we can hope. Jenny now also going for the thousand wood. So really, a real mirror here. Actually, people really like picking pretty much ninety percent the same cards. And Revnak putting another TC across the map here, securing the hunts, which is nice. 
versus a French player. Dragoons and Rangers worked out really well. Interesting. All right. I have to see some Rangers. Uh, yeah, if, if anybody's got any replays of some Ranger action with the Brits, it'd be really good to see them and see how they play, and see how good they are. And we do see now Revnak setting up. Is going to be able to pick off... Did he pick up pick off any uh, musks there, but did uh, manage to take their health down by quite a lot. And we do see now coal production incoming from Revnak. Just making sure that his Falks are protected as much as possible because Jenny is also producing Falks. Jesus Christ. It's like they're, it's like they're both stream sniping each other. What is going on here? It's uh, so similar. They've got exactly the same mindset of what they need to do, but Revnak is now going for the five Hussars. Further barracks coming in for Jenny. Still double musk. Is he going to get them all in? He's not. He's he's really low on that food, and that's one of the main issues with Brits is the 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 food consumption is is real. Is that a falc or a skinny falc? <laughs> they are both they're both training calves. All right, both training calves. It's hard to try and dart between the two. All right. It's difficult, this casting stuff. Jenny just still producing musketeers. That's, that's all that he wants to do. Commanders. Commandment. Ready. Ready. And now we do see... A bit of aggression here on the house on the outskirts of the map. Let's have a look at Revnak's vision here. Next house is going to be going down. And we do have a... A, a, a cheeky little raid here coming in from Jenny here. Trying to pick off some veals, but luckily Revnak has it covered. Musketeers are going to be able to deal with that, and he's going to be pushing forward now with his mass. He needs to make sure that he's got his calves in range just in case there's any funny business. And now if we remove the, uh, the fog of war. Jenny with another card available. He does have the good old eight longbow unlimited. I don't know. A lot of people have been saying that card's crazy. It's quite strong. Some people are saying it's okay. It's not really that all that. I think it's kind of a kind of a big card, especially if you stay age two for quite a while. Uh, age three for quite a while. Sorry, that can be quite a good card to have that unlimited. And uh, Revnat does not have it actually. Gone for the actual anti-water deck. Just noticed that. Yes. What do we see here? A cheeky little cavalry going to be coming in for Revnak. How successful is this going to be? I'm not too sure. Ready. These are the five husks that came from the home city shipment. And we do now see a further... Uh, we actually see... Is that the five settlers? So an age two shipment coming in now. I guess there isn't much else that he could really pick here. He could maybe go for the refrigeration. But instead, he's actually going for the five settlers. And score difference is... It's quite about a 2k score difference. Nothing major at this stage. And we do now see the absolute Ready. huge 66 musk mass with a couple of coals and falconets coming from Jenny here. And we do sort of see the same, but Jenny looks like he's definitely got way more of a mass compared to Revnak. But there are three chunky falconets coming behind. And here we go, guys. Oh, but we're going to we're gonna um, tussle there. That did not happen. Cole's going to just take a couple of shots. Why not? He is going to try and actually... Jenny's going to try and move these coals forward, see if he can get a little snipe. Hassar's doing quite a good job here, just annoying the Vils. And the Kolv is going to get shot off. One Kolv down for Revnak and one Kolv down for Jenny. And those those Falks having to get into position there has, has cost Jenny quite a bit. And he's lost now a Kolv and a Falk. And we do now see three Falks and further Kolvs on the way for Revnak. And it's looking pretty sketchy. For Jenny now, Jenny do, does have two Falks in production, but when it comes down to a Brit Mirror, it, it, a lot of it comes down to the micro of your artillery. You know, most of the time you're going to see Musk uh, versus Musk, and it honestly comes down to the artillery micro. And it's, it's definitely an art because artillery in this game is super retarded. And I'm not using that word lightly. I'm sure there's plenty of people that can agree with me. And what do we see down here? We do see another cheeky little raid here trying to get from Jenny here with the musks and it's it's not going to go too well. And just veals spreading all over the map. Casting easy peasy, says Harrison. All right. I see. I see how it is. Revenant coming in with the um, 
the H2 Musketeer damage upgrade, so really trying to go all out. We do see that they are pretty much on par, but soon, Revnax Musketeers are just going to be um, that little bit better, I think. Oh no, they're actually the same. 202 to 202. Yeah, same damage, same everything. So 66 feels for Jenny, 69 for Revnak. And he's got to try and dance around this gold mine, which is going to be really tricky. Fox is just going to go straight in here, trying to go straight on the Colves. And that's what's happening. And the Musketeers getting down and dirty, trying to make sure that they actually micro around to do as much damage as possible. And we do see all Fox have gone down now for Jenny, which is not too good. Two Colves down, all Fox down for Revnak here. But look at the look at the purple mass. There's still quite a lot here for Revnak doing a good job here. Trying to deal with all of the musketeers. And there is the GG from Minimolt here, aka Jenny Parsnips. Throws in the GG and Revnak wins another game as the Brits. So what can we say about this game? You know, yeah, it's a Brit mirror. It's, a, it's you know, very, very similar on both sides. But it was kind of interesting seeing the, seeing the 2TP opening on both sides and seeing the Greenwich time being used as well. Yeah, resources pretty much bang on. Jenny actually had the, um, or Minimo, I should say, had the eco advantage there quite a bit. Came down to the artillery again, guys. That's it. In that situation, got to make sure you got your good Colve and Falk play. It can really change the tide of the battle.